Hey everybody, it's Josh. Wanted to do a quick little video here. Uh, I don't know if the wind's going to, I'll try to stand this way. If the wind's gonna bother me too much with the sound. I wanted to talk about embracing our animalistic nature. Now this sounds like I'm, I'm talking about basically becoming an animal and, and giving into sin and, and giving into lust and desire and, and hunger. But no, it's not what I'm talking about at all. What I'm talking about is, all right, we look at early humans, at least the ones we have records of, even back to, to the Neanderthals. We can see how they worshiped some sort of God from the very beginning of recorded history. Now they put, they, they built shrines and eventually we have some structures that are believed to be over 20,000 years old that are mega structures too. And then of course you have Gobeke Tempe, which is, they're, they're thinking at least 11,000 years old, which was on a hilltop and it was intentionally buried so their secrets could be kept, I guess. We're not sure because the government, the World Economic Forum is not letting us excavate the land like it should be and find those secrets. We see these early humans, well, at least uh, ancient humans, and we see how they were drawn to the desire to give thanks to God for their food, for life, for death. They made sacrifices to their gods. Now, we don't know what they knew, obviously. I believe there was some sort of advanced civilization around before, you know, the Stone Age. I believe they, they found Atlantis in the eye of the Sahara. I believe, you know, a lot of things that are considered conspiracy theories, but these are considered conspiracy theories by people who have built their life on telling us lies about archeology, span about history. They don't want us to know so much, just like, just like the Vatican, they hide what was I, I think I said 37 miles of vaults containing artifacts from history. Now this stuff is just, you think about it and it's sad because we, we need to know our history to know more about who we are. But the good news is God already gave us the pathway to knowing who we are right inside of us and that is the desire to seek him now i get it some people have it and some people don't but the ones who don't are replacing that void they have within them with something else they're replacing it with materialism with with love of and relationships with other people they're replacing it with something that will devour them. So, it, it, you know, it was, I, I brought it up a few times, but uh, David Foster Wallace, an atheist writer, one of his last days alive, he wrote about how if you don't worship God, you will worship something that will devour you, like money, because when you worship money, you will never have enough and you always be poor. And you worship uh, lust or desire in another person. Let's say you, you worship your husband or wife. You know, that, that, that's your main thing that keeps you alive. That's your main hope in life. So what happens when that flawed human lets you down? It's just a matter of time. But we have to understand that 
we have the ultimate hope within us. We have that desire to seek God because God wants us to find him. He wants a relationship with us. He loves us so much, he gave us his son. Now, it reminds me of a, a story I heard just recently about a man with his son. They were working on a trolley and the trolley lost all power and they couldn't stop it. And it was heading to a city and there was nothing they could do about it except for take their own lives and crash it. So this man had to decide whether he wanted to sacrifice his son to save possibly hundreds, if not more people. Because who knows what kind of damage and destruction it would have done when it got to that city. Now he chose to sacrifice his son and his son obviously he, his son agreed with him he said let's do this just like in the you know the plane going down in uh was it flight 31 or 61 uh during 9 11. let's roll they knew they were going to lose their lives when they overtook the terrorist and took him down took down the plane but they did it anyway because they weren't allowed about to have those terrorists fly into another building and killing thousands of innocent people. The man with his son, they crashed the trolley before it could get to the city. Now, where does an atheist fall on this? Why would it, how can an atheist justify if we're just a clump of cells, how can they justify sacrifice for other people, especially sacrificing your life for other people? Now, they might do it. I'm not saying they won't. Some people have the morals. They just deny them. They deny where they come from. We are given this innate value because we are created in the image of God. That does not mean we look like God. God's not a man or a woman walking around. We are created in the consciousness. The love of God is within us all. It's the only thing that keeps us alive. It's the only thing that gives us hope. So if we do not worship God, we are not worshiping that ultimate hope. We don't have that ultimate hope in life. So whenever what we do worship lets us down, we will just collapse. We will be devoured by it. I understand there are arguments and there aren't good ones about why this isn't true, but how society and how survival of, you know, the species or whatever comes into it, but it's just, it absolutely makes no sense. If it was survival of the fittest, we would have a culture that would just be brutal. The strongest man would be taking all the women, whether they wanted to go with them or not. Uh, the smartest would be, it would be, the smartest and the strongest would be the, the ultimate rulers. And they would subject everyone else to their rule. But we don't have that. We have selflessness, we have sacrifice, we have all these things that make us God's children, that make us unique and valuable. I'm trying to get an angle where the wind is not too bad, but it, as you can see, it is beautiful out here. I am at uh, Blue Jay Point in Raleigh, one of my favorite spots to come to. I got an osprey nest right up there. Oh, the osprey's up there. You see him right up, or see him or her right up there? just hanging out. He came to see me. This is what makes us valuable though. This is what makes us beautiful. We can't deny this because we see from the very beginning, this is how it was. Now Neanderthals, we don't know if they worship gods or not. We can see little little like structures they built and stuff like that but 
their temples, like, like we see in the early human records, are not as massive and as, as in-depth that we know they were for worshiping a god. I'll put the osprey right over my head there. See him up there? But we are constantly reminded of our connection and our value through God. Because as soon as we turn our backs on him, we start getting hopeless. And if there are two things that humans need to stay alive, to not just take their own lives, it is hope and it is love. And a lot of that love comes through hope. And you know, the hope, the love, and the time are the main things that drive people crazy, that, that cause so many mental illnesses and depression, anxiety. We fear death, we fear life. We are creatures of fear when we don't have that hope. I'm here to tell you when you find Christ, when you have a relationship with him, I'm not saying the fear is gonna be instantly gone completely, but I'm saying 99% of that fear is going to vanish. You're going to have meaning and purpose in life. You're going to have love even when you're alone. You're gonna have that love even more when you are spreading the love to other people as that is the purpose we all have within us is that relationship first and then spreading and having that relationship spread to other people second that is the only purpose we need in life once we find it the only thing that that can drive us through the darkest times oh there's our osprey again you hear oh <laughs> i love that little guy. little guy oh there we see it okay i hear you buddy I'll put it like this so you can see him more. He's yelling at me. I don't know if he wants me to get out of here, so I'm, I might I might go here in a minute. Sounds like a seagull, doesn't he? They're they're beautiful creatures. I'll walk down here a little bit to kind of let him, just in case he's be bothered by me. He bothered by being a little guy, a little girl. I can't tell whether it's a guy or the girl. Anyway, our hope is dependent on God. Our value is dependent on God. Everything we are is dependent on God. This is why you see the main focus from the earliest times is on God. Now, they didn't know what they were seeking, or maybe they did. Maybe maybe God came to them and, and guided them in a different way back then. I don't know. But we know that that was their life. That was their entire reason for being. And I ultimately believe that is why we overcame the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals were, oh, I see. Okay, so there's another osprey across the way. I don't know whether she's yelling at her. <laughs> wow, I'm kind of interested in what's going on here now. I'm gonna to have to check that out after I'm done here. I'll let you all know in the comments if I find out something good, some good gossip in the osprey world. So, what I'm saying is embrace your spirituality, embrace your religion, whatever it may be, 
or however it may look. Embrace it completely. If it is something other than, than following Christ, I urge you to, to look at Christ as an, an example and understand why Christ gives us it's not the best religion because Christian Christians are just as flawed as everyone else. It is the best faith. The best faith in God. That is God. We can see so many people in other religions and, and, and even the non-religious respect Christ as a teacher and as a figure who who is the uh, an ethical genius now you can say whatever you want but to me with all those things and it, it is massive a figure as he is if you choose not to believe that he is god that that is completely up to you but i would urge you to please read matthew mark luke and john in the bible at least at the very least you know john's my favorite but matthew was great i mean they're all they're all great they all give you different perspectives on the life of christ and they are not trying to be some metaphorical you know thing like the old testament it is you know saying the earth was created in six days and you have to understand what they mean by that now i got a crane flying in front of me it is the Gospels are a record of the life of a man who is God, who came down to save us all. Look at the people who have been completely saved from a life that is not worth living to a life that is just glorious. Look at the history of worship look at everything you can look at the bad part the bad christians too but those you can see once you read the gospels they are not following christ they are simply using his name for corruption and power and greed all right i'm going to cut it out today i'm going to i'm going to go see what what's happening in the osprey world over here <laughs> hopefully i find some uh some good stuff going on here I love you all. We'll talk to you soon.